This happened to my father. I will tell the story the way he told me to better the story. I was 22 years old. I had just gotten a place closer to my new job, but the neighborhood I've lived in was secluded. Maybe four houses within a mile and nothing for miles after that. I was having a normal night, maybe my first week there. I watched some TV and fell asleep. When I woke up at around 1 a.m., I was about to go to my bedroom when I remembered to turn off the bathroom light at the opposite end of the house. As I was walking through the living room, I could barely see through the kitchen and even farther, the dining room. It was pitch black because the bathroom door was closed. However, in the dining room, I saw something tall standing up in the corner. I completely froze, and as my eyes adjusted, I saw that it was an old man or woman in a white gown with white hair. Hey, I yelled. The old person sprinted towards me like a jet. I sprinted back to my room where the light was on. I put my hands up, ready to fight, and the old person came lunging in, and when they saw me, they stopped and said, Why are you in my house? I pretended I was leaving and apologized while I eased into the closer bathroom, locked the door, and called 911 with the house phone. Turns out a woman about a half a mile away in the neighborhood had a form of dementia and wandered into my house while I was sleeping. When I was in my early 20s, my mom and I shared a house. We had a stalker. The first night we stayed in the house, someone got into our car. My mom happened to come outside, saw him, set off the panic alarm on the car, and scared him away. My backpack had been in the car, and he dumped the contents of the floorboard of the car, but left the paycheck that I had just cashed inside in a bank envelope. The police said that it seemed they were searching for something specific, and really questioned me about what that might be, but I have no idea. Police were able to get a partial palm print of the car, but had no matches in their system. My mom and I were out doing yard work and found a phone cord under our deck. It connected onto the phone box on the outside of the house. We called the phone company outside and they said that they figured that someone had been using the cord to hook up a phone and has laid it under our deck to listen in our phone calls. They removed the cord and put a lock on the phone box. We also frequently heard someone walking outside our windows at night. We would call the police and they would drive by but not see anyone. Another time, all of the light bulbs from our exterior lights were removed. Once we came home, my mom had realized that a pair of earrings and a stuffed animal had been sitting on our dresser were missing. There was no sign of anyone breaking entry but those items never turned up and we were sure someone had been in the house. We frequently heard this weird thump and a squeaky noise that we could never figure out what caused it. Another time, my mom was raking leaves at the front of the house and saw something in one of our bushes. It was a voice activated recorder wrapped in black plastic and tied to the trunk of one of our bushes. The recorder was tapped into our phone line. Someone had gotten under our house, drilled a hole through our foundation and run a phone cord through the hole into the recorder in the bush. We have no idea how a neighbor, though they were all elderly, didn't see this or hear this happening. The police, who were well aware of the issues by this point, now seem to realize that this was a serious and scary problem. They sent several officers out to investigate the recorder. We were in the house talking to an officer and heard the thump and the squeaking noise that we've always heard. We told the officer, that's the noise we can't identify. As it turns out, at that moment, an officer was crawling under the house and bumped the pipe. He was able to repeat the noise. The police figured that it was almost impossible to get into or out of the crawl space under our house without bumping that pipe. And we heard that noise a lot. The police think that whoever it was getting into the crawl space and lying under the house was listening to us. We put that cover over the entrance and glued it down. We put sequins in a certain order in the glue so that we could tell if it had been removed or re-glued. It was all insanely creepy. We eventually moved. I moved in with my boyfriend, now husband, on a second floor apartment. I felt so much safer with the people all around and figured that the stocking issue was behind me. 
Not long after we moved in, I noticed that our caller ID wasn't working. I called the phone company and they informed me that our Mr. Kramer had called and requested that the caller ID service be turned off on our phone. I had a meltdown. I was so upset. First off, because the phone company let some random person make changes on our phone line. And secondly, because apparently the issues were not behind me and they were planning something and didn't want the caller ID to show up. I put a password on our account so no changes could be made without it. And that was the last issue we ever had. I really think the caller ID issue was possibly unrelated. Maybe someone was accidentally making changes to the wrong account or something? Either way, it was very creepy though I have to admit. If the person had wanted to do something bad to either one of us, there were surely plenty of times that could have been done. It really seems they just want to observe us and scare us. Many years ago, before there were cell phones, we had these things called pagers strapped to our hips. Someone would pager with their phone number and you would call them back when you got to a phone. As an on-call technician working in the audio-visual field, my pager would go off all the freaking time. Like most people who use pagers, our clients knew that if you followed up with your number with a 911, that would indicate to the technician to stop what they were doing and call right away. Although I was always busy, I rarely ever got 911s. One afternoon, traveling from Orlando to St. Petersburg via Interstate 4, my pager goes off with a number I don't recognize, followed by the 911. I find the first exit and pull into a little truck stop looking place outside of Plant City to use a payphone. This takes maybe 3 minutes tops. I walk in, ask for some change, and head to the wall where there are 4 payphones to choose from. I pop my quarter in and dial the number displayed on my trusty pager. It rings, and rings, and rings, and rings. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? Who would page me with a 911 and not answer their phone? It's just about then that I notice another ringing sound in addition to the one in my ear. I pull the handset from my ear and two phones over on the wall, another payphone is ringing, but with an incoming call. I hang up my handset, and the ringing stops on the other phone. I walk a few paces over, pick up a handset, and look at the phone number printed above the buttons. I look at the number on my pager, I look at the number on the phone, I look at the number on my pager again, and then I look at the phone again, except for the 911. They were completely identical. I kind of lose my breath for a second, and then I make my way over to the girl at the counter and ask if she saw anyone use the payphone. She said I was the only person in the store in the last hour. The whole episode probably took about 15 minutes, but man, I was freaked out. The hair on the back of my neck was standing straight up, and I just wanted out of there. I get about 10 miles down the highway and come upon a scene that looked like a bomb went off. Four cars piled up, involving a tractor trailer hauling a load of steel that had come loose. State troopers and paramedics have just arrived, so I pulled over to the side and helped the best I could. But it was all pretty much over once it began. I have no idea why I got that page, or from whom, or what, but I'm convinced that if I hadn't, I would not be alive to write this today. I just want to say thank you to everyone who have watched this video. If you can, it would be greatly appreciated if you can smash the like button on this video and share it to others. But most importantly, please subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the near future. Also, please feel free to tell me in the comment section below on which video I should do next. This is Mr. Shin Ramen. Until next time, stay safe and stay scared.